This conference will now be recorded. Okay, let's start. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone, wherever you are from. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for attending this online session on must have three script when working with XR data, grid infrastructure, ASM, OPATS, and in the cloud by Fred Dennis. On behalf of Nepal Oracle user group, I would like to thank Fred for accepting this invitation to present this online session. Our workplace become hell or heaven. That totally depends on us. With good tools in our hand, we can enjoy the work or without them, we could have a miserable job. I still remember the day when I was introduced with the ASMTU script. Actually, I was not aware this is not an Oracle provided script. The script is simply awesome. Uh, I use it and found it so easy to figure out which ASM subdirectory is consuming the most of the space. Uh, before that, I have to navigate to each subdirectories and execute du command to figure out the most space consuming asm subdirectory so the script is simply awesome and uh, our work experience totally depend on us so i suggest everyone to have some basic coding skill on bass ball or python or something else so that you can have a good job and you can work easily uh you would you don't have to be an expert on them, but should have some basic coding skill to enjoy the work. Simply create or ask someone to create tools you require to troubleshoot and work on the daily basis. And I suggest automate most part of the regular jobs and explore new things. Uh, if I have to summarize everything in a single line, then I would like to say, let's be organized, be disciplined, live a peaceful life keep simple and contribute to the community community uh, fred is an oracle is he is my colleague we work in the same company under different managers and teams actually i love the way fred works i'm quite impressed with his accelerator skill and troubleshooting skill fred does awesome jobs he's an expert in creating tools make to make dba's life easier Fred is an active blogger in unknowndb.blogspot.com. He is simply organized, simple, and has heavily contributed to the community. And as usual, due to a few limitations in the webinar tool, I humbly request everyone to stay mute until the end. Yeah, you may raise question anytime via chat, via text in the chat section. We will grab them and try to reply during the session itself. Uh, lastly, I request you to fill up the feedback form. You will get the URL of feedback form in the message window. Uh, your feedback and comments are very valuable. So guys, please fill it up. Uh, saying that, now I would like to hand over the control to Fred. Fred will start his introduction. Start with his introduction and the session, exciting session itself. So guys, let's enjoy the session. Uh, Fred, I'm handing the, I'm making you as a presenter. So let's, okay. all yours. Great, can you, okay. Can you see my screen? Yep, we can. Okay, great. Let's get started. So thanks, Dili. Thanks, uh, Nepal guys, for this opportunity to to do this um, <coughs> this presentation. Uh, let's present. I'm going to introduce myself very quickly. My name is Fred Dennis. I come from Australia. You have probably already guessed from my accent, from city of Brisbane, which is here. And indeed, I'm French as well. So I'm a French guy living in Australia. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, as Didi said, I uh, I run that blog. I try to share um, 
interesting scripts, interesting situation when we have been caught. Uh, it is not a blog where you're going to find a copy and paste of the documentation. Uh, everything has been tested and is used on a daily basis on production, a real production client system. Uh, this is my Twitter account. You can follow me with no risk. I don't tweet a lot just when I share a, a new thing. Um, if you want to contact me, you can use LinkedIn chat. Uh, I don't have a share in LinkedIn, but I have the app in my, on my phone and it's very handy. Uh, also, I am an Oracle Ace. Uh, so yeah, I've been speaking in some conferences that collaborate Sangam, Open World, but, well, different places. Uh, maybe less this year because due to the coronavirus, many conferences will be cancelled. So it's nice to do some webinars. So why is this talk? Well, you know, in our job, sometimes we expect things to be easy, but uh, actually they are not, or something like obvious tools just don't exist. So as I am very lazy and I don't like to do repetitive stuff, you know, with useless or non-added value, I started to develop some scripts for the machine to do my job, basically. And uh, well, first I started to use on my own, then I shared to my team, my company, and well, it shared to the community and every, well, not everyone, but many of, of us uh, uses it. So sometimes I meet someone and say, oh, we use that thing on all our uh, machines. It's very, it's very re rewarding and I'm very happy to help everyone. So, um, as I cannot test everything on every different system, I work mainly on Exadata and then on Linux and even in the cloud, it's Linux everywhere. So, uh, guys with Solaris, IAX or HP UX, if you find some weird thing or weird behavior or bugs, contact me. It's the same if you got a new feature ID or something. Just contact me. I have already improved them a lot because people telling me, oh, you should do this, you should do that. Okay, let's do it, fair enough. Uh, everything is free, simple bash made, so you just have to copy paste everything on your system. Uh, bash is everywhere, it's on your phone, it's everywhere, so there's nothing to install. Copy and paste and run it. So let's start with ASMDU. Um, I must admit that I'm not a big fan of, a of ASM. I'm not saying it's not working, it's pretty efficient. But the thing is that one day or another, you're going to be page call or whatever because your table space is full, for example, and then you have to increase the size by adding a data file, and then you have to know the size left on your disk group, right? And then you run, you set your environment like this, and you run this command ASMS CMD LSDG. We see which is an Oracle tool, right? And you got all these numbers. So on the right, you got the name of the disk group, which it's uh, indeed an interesting uh, information to get. Uh, on the left, you got the redundancy. So this is something you want to be aware of as well. And in the middle, you got all these numbers. So first, we can see that it's megabyte, and there is no way of changing that. Uh, meaning that, for example, these numbers, uh, this is 500 terabytes. So this is a kind of size we can see more and more, um, you know, for, I don't know, for, for years and years, maybe for 10 years, you know, megabyte. I don't know, maybe floppy disks are still in megabytes. But so if we can, you can clearly see that first it is 500 megabyte, uh, terabytes, sorry. Well, this is very confusing. Another issue with that, is that all these numbers are non-mirrored size and this one here is mirrored size. So honestly, if from LSDG you can quickly see what is the space left on your that this group, well, you for me it looks like more the matrix, you know, it's not really usable. So I developed ASMDU, which is just a shell script. So first I show the instances running. Um, it is not really useful, but I really like it because when you go first on a system you don't know, uh, by knowing that you quickly know that, okay, you got one or 50 instances, I, I like to have this information. And that you, you have a clear table, 
table with uh, this group indeed on the left, the redundancy, because we want to know that. And you got total the total size and the usable size, which is basically only what we need to know. And well, here it is terabyte, so well, it's more useful than megabyte. And on the right, you got the percentage free of your disk group. So with colored threshold, so you can very quickly see that, okay, data disk group only have 4%. So maybe I can, I may want to have a look. And the other are green, so it looks good. Uh, if you, the default of the script is a warning, meaning it's red, yellow, and green, you know, I keep, kept it simple. So uh, the warning to become yellow is 75%, critical 90. If you want to change that, just edit the script and you're good to go. Um, as a DBA, uh, we may want more information about that. Um, I consider this output. Well, let's say it's a simple one for clients. Uh, this is why I screenshot to show to the client, well, you know, you have only 4% free, there is something to do. But as a DBA, there is more information where you can have with a minus V option that shows all these uh, in more um, numbers. Uh, this one is a total non-mirrored size of the disk group. This one is a non-mirrored free size, and the reserved size is the amount of free space required to be able to restore the redundancy in case of you have a disk problem. And you got a no note uh, below the table showing how the usable is calculated. So the, cal the usable size that is shown is the free minus the reserved divided by the redundancy meaning that we don't show the reserved size to the client. This is because for the simple reason that, you know, the client is always right. Well, he, he, which makes sense because uh, in some way he pays your mortgage, right? So he's right. So if you if you show to a client, my this group, your this group production is 1% free, but we have five terabyte of reserved size, is they are gonna push you to use this reserved size, right? And if during this time uh, you got a disk failure, you're going to work on the weekend, you're going to make um, the maintenances and you're going to have trouble because if you lose your redundancy, you may lose data. So the best way is to hide this information to the client and say, okay, this is not something we want to use. Reserved size is something for the system to ensure the data uh, security, don't touch that. But still, I put that option. This is for us, DBAs. If you want to put it by default, there is a parameter in the script. By default, it is known. Uh, just a note, if you got external redundancies, um, here, for example, uh, indeed, the reserved size is zero because we need no size, no extra size to restore a redundancy because there, it is managed by the system or there is none, none at all. You can use different units. Uh, so if you like the default ISMCMD LSDG behavior, which shows you megabyte, let's go with megabyte minus M megabyte. Uh, G for gigabyte, gigabyte and T for terabyte. Uh, I have not implemented a P for petabyte because I think we, well, maybe I should do it and be ready for the last 50 years or something. Uh, terabyte is default. Uh, you can change that in the script to uh, suit your needs. Depends. For me, usually terabyte because nowadays it's most likely terabytes. Uh, as Dilly said, um, subdirectory is maybe a problem. Uh, this is an example where a data DG is 4% free. So you may want to investigate before reaching the, the threshold, right? 4%, but it's not a lot. So what I was used to do with uh, ASM CMD, you know, you go um, on your disk group and I was used to do like I would have done on any Unix shell, du star. And here is a result, which is actually the total minus the usable. So du star under ASM CMD acts as du dot under any Unix shell. So, well, this is not at all uh, useful to manage subdirectories. So to do that, the workaround, 
the official way of doing that is to do that kind of loop to loop across all the subdirectory and use the asmcmd du command against everything this is not <coughs> sorry i'm a bit sick this is not what you want to do on a daily basis and when you are in a rush with your this group full you don't want to find back where is my four thing and my loop and everything. So ASMCMD does it for you. There is an option minus D where you can specify your path. Uh, you're going to have um, a summary of the disk group, still the same. And at the bottom, every subdirectory. And here you can quickly see that, for example, on that this screenshot, DB5, 10, and 12 are the biggest player here. So no need to investigate others. This output may be slow because um, behind the minus D option, I use that uh, for loop, and this command from ASMCMD DU is very slow. Uh, another example here, this one, is to show that you don't have the minus D option, accept a path, a whole path. You don't have to specify only a this group. For example, here I go in Rico my database ABC10 and archive log. So I'm going to investigate only my archive log. Still, I got my Rico thing and you can quickly see here, for example, and the funny thing is that when I did that, this is a real example. There is some archive log leftovers from 2012. So you just have to remove it, but if you don't know it, uh, everything, you know, it was using maybe 95% of everything. So that's very handy. Uh, there is an H option, then you can have all the options and everything. That's very handy. I use it uh, well, almost every time because ASM is almost everywhere nowadays, right? Uh, another one is uh, rack status. Uh, so before getting the question, it works with a rack. I call it rack because I'm an old guy and maybe it should be green infrastructure, but uh, it covers Oracle Restart and 11 G12, 18, 19. It doesn't cover GI 20C because it, it has not been released yet. As soon as it is going to be released, uh, I will be testing it and most likely it's going to be or if there is a modification from Oracle, uh, I'm going to apply it to support 20C as soon as possible. So when you, as a DBA, got a rack system, uh, you want to know quickly what is up, because you know <laughs> this is what pays us. Uh, what is supposed to be up, which is a bit different than the what is up question, and where it is up is my instance on the uh, up on um, node one or in node five or whatever and uh, when you do maintenance you want to know what was up before my maintenance because you want to put everything back as it was before your maintenance after your maintenance you don't want your client to send you an email on the monday hey fred my service on node seven my service blah blah back up something on my node 7 is not there and he's up on node 3 you know you don't look very professional so if you are called that the old-fashioned way meaning without rack status uh, to know what instant how many instances runs on the node one node you can do that ps uh, you can know how many nodes you have with ols nodes uh, so here you can have eight times 36 instances running or not because you may have configuration that kind of weird and with instances not up everywhere and then you can uh, CRS CTL stat uh, to have the information with the Oracle database type so here you got 20 uh, 18k lines uh, and this is uh, dynamic configuration you have uh, 3.4k lines so it's not really easy to do it if you are using oem uh, well uh, good luck um, i don't know a way to to do what i'm going to show you uh, easily with oem so rack status same it's just um, an easy script so just copy and paste 
So first, if you are on Exadata, it's going to show you the name of the cluster and the Exadata model. If you are not in Exadata, it's going to show you just nothing. And at, uh, below that, you got a nice table. So on the left, you got all the databases running there. Uh, you got one column per node. So here, for example, it's a four node rack. Uh, the second column is a versions. So 12.1.0.2. And you can note this little number. It is a reference to. Sorry, uh, it's a reference to the Oracle Home, where it is installed. And in the middle, you have one um, status per instance and per node. Here, for example, this one DB01 is open on the first and the second node. But there is a blue hyphen in on node three and four, meaning that it is not supposed to be open. This is what we want. We want to have it only on node one and two. So we're good. Uh, on the right, you have uh, the, the DB type. So um, it's a rack. I will show different uh, DB type. And you got a P for primary of, or S for a standby, if it is a standby. So you can very quickly see uh, what's on. Uh, you also have, uh, we don't see it very well with my number, uh, close to the, um, to the home, you also have the owner. Uh, here, Oracle O install uh, as, is the owner of this home. This is very handy, specifically when you start, you come first on a, a system, you can quickly see if someone tried to do something. You know, sometimes you got uh, Arm Airman or uh, you got Oracle DBA or Oracle O install or a root or whatever. Uh, you can very quickly have a quick glimpse of anything weird of you can have already a, a good idea of the healthiness of your system. Uh, on a large implementation, uh, it looks like that. Uh, so this is uh, eight nodes exadata. Uh, it is not um, the real one uh, I took the screenshot from is bigger than that, but I had to reduce it because it doesn't fit on the screen. So on the left you have the databases. I blurred it just because you know everything is very secret. Uh, you got the versions, and here you can see that you have different home one, two, three, four homes. And in the middle you got a big table with uh, every status. Uh, on the bottom, you got all the homes. So here we have four homes, and we can see that it has been nicely done because everything is installed as Oracle O install. Uh, this is an Oracle restart uh, example. So this is in Oracle Cloud. Yes, someone? Okay. Uh, so this is just an Oracle restart. So um, in Oracle Cloud, you just got one database, one service, and one listener, and you, you don't have a rack, but it works as well because it is by, based on uh, grid infrastructure. Uh, it's very handy to identify issue. If you have, for example, this big output, you can see quickly that everything that is non-green or white whether it is yellow or red means, well, there is something wrong. So very easily you can say, whoa, I got a problem here. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can have different uh, DB types. So on the, you can, if the, the, on the DB type it is rack, which is most likely what you're gonna see, um, but you can have also rack one node. Uh, this client, for example, had lots of rack one node. Uh, it also shows the listeners. So on top you got the listeners, the listener scans, the port where the listener is uh, listening. Um, this example has only one port, but uh, if you have more port, it's going to be shown as well. Where it is online and the type, if it's a listener or, or a scan listener. It also shows the services. So it's the same way. Uh, I cannot show everything on one slide because it's just too big. But on the left, you got uh, the name of the database, the service, and you can see uh, you still have one column per node. And in the middle, it's the same. You can quickly see where is your service. 
if your service are is are disabled which may happen for example for a, a maintenance or you don't want it to start anymore whatever uh, uh, you're going to have a little red cross close to the service like this one and this one so you can very quickly see if something is disabled it works with the instance as well in the instance if you got a red cross like this okay i think there is a, a little lag between the winner okay uh, if you got a red cross, meaning okay, your instance is disabled. And uh, when the background is red like that, it means that the status and the target are different. Uh, the cluster has a target, for example, you can have a resource that has a non line target, but for any reason it is shut down. And if these statuses are different, it means that, for example, your status is shut down, but you want it is supposed to be. On open was well, there is something wrong so um, this is something to investigate because for example uh, so to answer Adil's um, uh, Adil's uh, question in the chat where where can I get this script uh, I will show a slide at the end with everything you there is a link you could click. yes thanks <laughs> no worries uh, if you have recently restarted resources, uh, they are going to happen with a yellow background like that, with a, a command on top. Uh, I really like this one. You know, you come on a system on a Monday morning. You know, you just type type rack status and oh, whoa, what happened there? You know, something has been have been restarted. So by default, it is going to show with a yellow background. Uh, everything that has been restarted less than 24 hours so you can very quickly see oh something wrong happened uh, there is an option minus w you can specify for example 3d so what has been restarted in the last three days one one w for one week you know two months or five years or whatever uh, it is very handy you'll see uh, i like it uh, and you can go back in time with this option. You type rag status, you have nothing restarted. Minus W, seven days. Oh, okay. What has been restarted in the last seven weeks? Uh, seven days, sorry, the last week. That's very handy. And if you want to deactivate that, you just put zero and you won't have this information. Uh, you can customize um, the output. So by default, uh, I ship it like that because this is what usually people use is that uh, it shows the database the databases the listeners but the service may not be wanted at its execution and we have configuration with 200 services so it just screw up your output so uh, you can in the in the script you can just show deep database yes this is a default okay what it shows so services no by default um yeah that's it but from the command line you can specify it um i i show you minus a basically shows everything minus n shows nothing and you got dl and s to revert the the thing it it looks a bit weird like that but it is extremely handy for example the thing is that when i go on a system i don't know whether what someone could have change in the script maybe he, he shows only only the services you know and i want to see everything so minus a will force to see everything and if i want to see everything but not the services i can just go with minus a and minus s and then i'm going to show only the database and this stuff. just give a try to this option you will see it's very handy uh, I do lots of maintenance. We all do lots of maintenance, and I really want you know I, you don't look professional when, uh, as I said before, you know um, a client send you an email. Hey, Fred, my backup, uh, my service, my listener was on node two, is on node one. You know that sucks clearly. So you want to have a perfect, exact image with that. So what I do in all my action plan, whether it, in a, it is Exadata or not, we, we don't mind. Rack status is based on grid infrastructure. Grid infrastructure is almost everywhere nowadays. I just use that. Rack status minus A, I know I'm gonna show all the resources and I disable the recently restarted. I will explain why. And I just save it in status before maintenance. That's just a text file. It takes one second. 
And after the maintenance, I do the same. I just save in another text file status after maintenance. And I disable the, the, the recently restarted resource because I know they have been restarted after my resource and I don't want the next command, which is just a diff, just a diff of these two commands and it's gonna show you everything that is different. Uh, you may have the listener scans restarted on different nodes. This is not a problem. This is the concept of the listener scan. But you will see if a service has, is not properly restarted and everything. This is these three lines take three seconds to execute, and then you can fix everything and deliver to the client the exact perfect status they were before. Since we do that for I don't know, I started developing that I don't know three four years ago. It never happened that the client client complains and if he complains because oh my backup sorry i'm stick with the backup service was on node 7 no 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 we have saved everything in that in that um, file so we know how it was before right so three commands and your maintenance is exactly idem put and you look very professional uh, when you have a very big um, very big uh, systems, uh, you may not want to uh, show everything. So there is the minus G and V, com and v option to grab uh, or grab minus V. So G, you're going to grab. This is an example. Minus G12, you're going to grab only the 12C. Minus A, I show everything. Minus grab chat. So everything that contains chat will be shown. Uh, and well, you can experiment yourself. You can grab uh, only the services that are not online, something like that. Uh, this is an option I made. This is to show the, uh, the output is uncolored. This is because someone wanted to send by email uh, the result of a rack status and uh, the shell colors code were uh, screwing up everything. So he asked me and I did it. So if you want no color, you just put minus U, so you're going to have just a black and white thing. Uh, there's a question. I have a question on how can one see the cluster word daemon status using Rack status script? Okay, the answer to that is uh, currently you cannot. Um, I think I will do it uh, with an option like G, like technical stuff, to show the this group. Um, the ASM and all that stuff. Um, there is not much people interested in that, but it is in my to-do list, Rakesh. So maybe if I'm a bit less busy, uh, I will do. Uh, but the question is that, yeah, so it's in my secret to-do list, Rakesh, to do it uh, one day. But currently, um, I would say that the users of Rack Status are more interested in the database services layer, uh, but I will do it. It's in my to-do list. Thanks, Fred. That's okay. Uh, another question is that uh, we got a, a colleague of Dili and I at a client, and for any reason, the, um, his putty, I don't know, his connection terminal had a white background, and he could not change that. And when running rack status, he called me and said, Fred, I cannot see anything. You know, I'm blind. I cannot work. And then I made um, an option or to revert the colors in case of, for any reason, you cannot change the background of your uh, terminal and it's white. So now this is fixed. Uh, yeah, if rack status by default use aura env to get connected to get the asm environment and then be able to use crs ctl uh, i got someone who contacted me and after analysis his grid infrastructure was installed by root or was not working well they had the very complex stuff uh, i'm not here to men to uh, to advise you how to do it is i have here to adapt and show you a nice table so there is an option minus e if you say minus e you're gonna use your current environment and forget about aura of if you got this kind of complex way of setting your environment uh you can set, set it for um, by default in the script uh, there is a minus H for help. Uh, this screenshot is a bit old. There is lots of more option about that. And here there is, a, well, I maintain on my blog a detail of everything. 
I was just looking for something similar to Paul Abel's serious stat script, which had the line for. Uh, okay, can you, Rakesh, can you just paste the link of this script? I don't know it, and uh, be fine. Uh, actually, that script is not available. Uh, you know, uh, that Inkitech blog uh, link is broken right now. Uh, and okay. I personally try to, uh, but the script is there somewhere in the GitHub. I can share it to you. Uh, I can share it with you. You know, uh, let me okay. search on that. I will Which had a line when the shoes was last restarted, but this is what I showed. Yeah, so that includes everything, right? You know, the the init demands as well as the you know the um, database status, service status, all the you know dependencies. <clears throat> Oh, okay, it's more technical stuff. Do you have a kind of, uh, you know what, Rakesh, uh, you, what you can do with that, send me by, for example, on the LinkedIn chat, um, the kind of output you want, and I okay. see how I can make it. You know, sure, sure. Yeah. Just uh, a couple of lines, or, uh, you know, or, and I'm sure I can add it. Or at least okay, have sure. a look yeah. and try. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks. So there's lots of other options uh, that the main ones. Uh, honestly, well, we we use Rack status in my company every day, and that's very handy. Uh, for example, this is an example of a use when we do patch. For example, this is an Exalata with four nodes. So when you start your patch, everything is open. And when you do for a, a rolling patch, so meaning you're going to patch uh, your cluster um, node one, everything is down, and then node two, node three, node four, and it's back to everything. It is very handy to to follow that. Uh, Rackman. So Rackman is a monitoring tool, very quick monitoring tool based on Rack status, and it does what I described earlier. Um, you need rack status, and first it saves a reference of the output of your uh, rack status, the status of your cluster. Basically, it does that in a reference file, and at every execution, it saves a new current status and it does a diff. This is what I described before, but it is made by a script as well. So the prerequisite is that you just need rack status. Uh, there is a parameter and a text file to save a reference file. It is a text file as well. And when you execute it, when there is no reference file, it is a first execution, uh, it's gonna create it, and after that, it's gonna check if something has changed. Also, it uh, manages the return, Unix return code, so, sorry, just a So, <coughs> um, Oh, sorry, that's sickness. So if you use a third-party tool to use it, you you could rely on the on the return code. When there's an error, you will be prompted that you will see the error. So quickly, you will see that that listener was online, is no more online, and this one as well. So it's very handy to to check if something is broken. And it's going to return one. So if you use a third party tool, you're going to see it. Uh, you can send an email if you got an error, minus E, send an email, you know, to someone, a pager, to page someone. You can also send an email on success. Well, I did that because sometimes, you know, managers are kind of imaginative. And then, uh, uh, then I did that. It was very easy to make. So I did it. Uh, there you have option to always send emails with no option by default, changing the default. You can put your email address, it can be lots of address, you can change the subject. This is very, very simple. Uh, sometimes you, if you add, for example, a listener or a service, you don't want to be page, so you have to recreate the reference file. So you can just do it like that or delete it and at the next execution, it's going to be recreated and you can test it. I had to use that um, very recently. We got an issue when upgrading with the GI to 19C, and the client said uh, it was obviously, you know, uh, a Friday afternoon, like, oh, we want to know, we want, I want to get mail if that specific service uh, goes down. 
uh, we have OEM, we have everything, but you know, it's so difficult to, to do it. So in 10 minutes, I said, okay, I got Trackman, you know, I create a reference, I put his email and mine copy and, and a cron tab every five minutes, end of the story. So that's very handy. Yeah, you can cron it like that, you know, it's very easy. It, yeah, by the way, as Rack Status checks the status of the resources on all the nodes, uh, you only need to schedule it on one node. Uh, as usual in my script, minus H, you got a description. I try to make it nice. Uh, LS patches, yes, that's a great tool. Uh, we all know Opatch. Uh, Opatch is a tool used by Oracle to apply patches. It's a nice tool uh, and we can rely on it. That's great. Uh, but there's clearly a lack of reporting capabilities. Uh, so, okay, you can do Opatch LS patches, for example. This is an output, so you got the patch which is installed, that's great. The thing is that in a rack system, you, are, you don't have the remote uh, information. So, uh, you can do LS inventory minus all nodes, or it has changed with the recent version, which is uh, Opatch report uh, minus format XML something. That's great, but uh, that's many lines. This one has almost uh, for uh, 500 lines. So um, for one home on two nodes, so it's gonna be almost 2000 lines if you got eight nodes, for example. And if you got 10 homes, wow, good luck. Um, so, and you want to know, and I want to know, and especially before and after the maintenances I do, if the patch one, two, three, four, five, six is installed or all the nodes, or is there a missing patch on a home? Um, I met someone uh, when I was at Sangam, that uh, a guy was working for Oracle support and they had a cluster, I think something like 36 nodes rack and uh, they had a performance issue. And the guy told me that uh, he used LS patches across the rack, and he found that on one node, one patch was missing. And he could not really say to the client, well, I use Fred script to troubleshoot that, but he said, well, go on that blog, don't know that. And he found it with LS patches. When you have 36 nodes, but even if you have four nodes, you got this weird thing, how to quickly know, be sure that everything is uh, the same on all things, you, you know? So, well, it's kind of good that even Oracle support use my script. <laughs> so a sample output, this is an output where on top you got the home, uh, you got the Opatch version, which is very interesting. Uh, so as usual, I, I always do the same table because they look clear, you got the patch ID, and you got one column per node, and well, when a patch is missing, well, you got a big red missing. So you're gonna be, you're gonna see very, very quickly where your patch is missing. So basically, you do LS patches. It checks all your homes defined on Oratab, and oh, sorry, you got one table per home. If you want to ana analyze only some of the homes, uh, I have used. <coughs> An option like minus G, I always use G for grep. For example, to analyze all the homes that contain 12, you just minus G12. And minus V for grep minus V. So here you're going to analyze everything containing 12, but not, for example, OAP, because you don't want to mess up with uh, APPSDB or something. Uh, if you're unsure about what it's going to do, you can um, show before proceeding. So minus S will just show. So it's going to show, okay, you're going to analyze these um, homes. Um, yeah, if we don't specify anything, basically it lists everything that is defined in your Aura tab. Like that. Um, you can save the output of that. Um, for example, here, this is what I do, you know, for when Oracle support asks you, you know, give me the LS inventory of uh, all your homes, you know, wow, my God, you know, if you do it manually, well, it's not super long, but it's going to take you maybe 30 minutes, you know, you have to change your ARV and etc. So if you specify minus O, it's going to save you in the, in the, in a file. So this is what I do. And then you can send it to Oracle support or whoever. 
here it generates that kind of opaque output and uh, if you count the lines of it this was three homes across eight nodes so here you're going to have 8,000 lines. So, well, I, I use that, you know, and that's it. It's very easy, you know, generate that. It takes, I don't know, 30 seconds, the time for a patch to proceed. And you can send that an email or, you know, curl it to update, update, upload it to uh, MetaLink and you're good to go. Uh, you can also use this kind of generated files uh, as an input. So, for example, for any reason, someone sends you a no patch. You know, we can have some systems. Sometimes we support client. We cannot connect because it is super secure or, and we are contractors. So then you can say to the client, okay, generate your uh, LS inventory minus all nodes and send it to me. And then you can use it. And see that if a patch is missing for example that's very handy uh, on rack system it goes with remote so minus all nodes option or depending on the um, version of opatch it's going to use opatch auto minus remote because uh, since a year or two maybe uh, oracle has changed that <coughs> and uh, you can force to go local or, and on a non-rack system it goes local automatically there is a minus age Try it, it's very handy. I use it before patching grid, for example. I use it, or even when you apply a patch on a home, you LS patches, save that, and after each node is being patched, and you can very check that very quickly. And it's always better to screenshot that to a client, with a, you know, there is nice colors, saying, okay, here is the status before starting, a screenshot, it's nice. Instead of sending, uh, I don't know, do you send an uh, LSO inventory uh, output? Well, it's, it's not really readable. So you look nice. Um, this one I developed when I started to work in the cloud, actually, because uh, when you work in a cloud, but on some system, you also have the same concept. You are connected on a machine, a jump server, let's say with a non-privileged user. So for example, F Dennis has at jump server. And uh, you connect through SSH to a non-privileged user. For example, if it's Oracle Cloud, it's OPC at server one. And then you should do to a privileged user, Oracle for example, to do your job. Okay, and you can do that on many, many, many servers, right? So my question was, I had that on, oh, let's say, 10 servers. And I said, well, okay, great, uh, but uh, I just want a rack status, you know, just to know what is up. You know, this is something very simple. And actually, this does not exist. If you, if you have OEM deployed, you can, yeah, you can start, you can launch a script. Well, this is a mess. I wanted something very easy. So, well, it was not existing, so um, I made it. If you run Exadata, you have Decly, but the thing is that uh, Decly is not available of non-Exadata, and if you are in the cloud, well, or any other configuration, you don't have Decly. So I made your, yet another launcher. I didn't know how to name it. Here is how it works. Uh, here, is for here, for example, I am on my uh, jump server. I can specify a comma separated list servers, so server one, server two, you know, and you're gonna see that there will be a begin on server one and end on server one, everything that will be executed remotely on the remote server. So user to login minus L, so here I'm, I wanna login as OPC, for example, in Oracle Cloud. So here you can see that I did an ID and then I was logged, I logged on OPC. And you can also specify some commands to execute. So here I just executed uptime and I did. And you can see the output of that. You can also specify if you don't, if you have a lot of uh, servers, for example, you can use a file containing um, one line per server, like the, the file, uh, this one is named a list, for example. And here you can specify minus G a list. I have mimic. I have mimic uh, the decline for those who work with Exadata, the decline options. And if you come from Exadata, it's the same exact options. So here I'm going to use a configuration file instead of a comma separated list. 
uh, you can see that it connects on server one, server two, and those your thing. You may want a sudo, right? Because when you connect as OPC, for example, you have no privilege. You cannot run racks that you say SMD or whatever. So there is an option to sudo. This is something you cannot do with decry, for example, on Exadata. So here, minus E, like execute, execute Oracle. So here, you can see that uh, I have sudo and I will execute my command uptime and ID as Oracle. This is how you can execute, for example, rack status minus X for execute. So you need to have rack status on your jump server. It's going to be copied on the target server, executed on each server. I cannot paste the whole uh, output because it's too big. But here, minus X rack status. You can see that rack status has been copied as a temporary file in slash tmp, slash tmp exists, and you can write on it on any Unix server. And you got the rack status output, you know. And at the end, the temporary script is removed. So that's very handy to execute something. And you can see that uh, I also have minus b, it's to execute commands before doing something. Here I just echo before and after I just echo after. So you can do something before executing the script, executing the script, and do it something after. It can be send an email or whatever it is. You can copy a script as well. So here is minus F your script and minus D for your target um, target um, directory. Not executing, just copy it. Or here, for example, we can see that. Uh, the script has been successfully copied. On the two servers, it, before it was not existing and after it was existing. It is very easy to copy uh, to lots of servers. Uh, you got a config, conf, configuration file uh, to specify any option. You don't want to repeat uh, SSH option, SS, SCP option, a user to execute, tons of options. And uh, as you may end up with a kind of big um, command line, you can specify minus O. Minus O will just show you all the options that's going to be used uh, between the default, the config file, and etc. Uh, with your command line. You can do that. This is what I do, you know, not to mess up before doing something. So basically, it is a kind of super decry for non-exadata thing. So you can use on any option. What you need is just um, a SSH key deployed, which is the case in any cloud or anything. You can do some non-Oracle stuff. I do lots of non-Oracle stuff with that, but I started to do it uh, in, it was, with Oracle Cloud, and sometimes I use that instead of decly on Exadata, even if decly is an awesome tool. Same, you got a minus H for uh, every option, and there is a blog of my blog describing everything. Uh, this one is a quick one. You know that uh, real life example, and you know, Friday, 5 p.m., you want to go on a weekend with your stepmother. You're waiting for that for a month, and your manager comes and says, Hey, Fred, I want the value of the parameter, whatever it is, on every database on your um, development exadata. So if you have rack status, you can see that. This is a development exadata, right? So some instances are up on the node one and two, some are up on node three and down for any reason. You don't want to deal with that on a Friday afternoon. On node four, and some are up on one, two, and down on three, four. So uh, if you have to do that manually, and this is a very small, um, a very small um, uh, configuration, you have to SSH to the node. Set your environment, SQL plus, select name, value, blah, 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 Vedera parameter. And you have to do that for every database from rack status. And if you don't have rack status, I would say good luck. So I had to do that a couple of times and uh, on far bigger configuration than that. So I did that script. 
Uh, this is an old thing. Uh, I started to do it on Exalata. The name is not Exa on all DB, it's Rack on all DB because it works on any Rack configuration. So here you can run a query. You can see that this one result come from a database name one, which was open on DB3, so it got connected on DB3. The Oracle SSH uh, passwordless connectivity is a prerequisite when you install Rack, so it's going to work. And uh, you have to spe you have the output of your query here. This is a real life example when we had um, exafusion problem. So we wanted to know uh, the exafusion enabled parameter. Uh, here, DB number two has been connected to. It was on node one, and I know that Exa Fusion one was set to one. To customize the query, you just edit the script. There is a big thing: start inserting your SQL here and stop inserting your SQL here. You can put whatever you want. Uh, I would recommend don't put shut down. Uh, it's going to work. Uh, trust me. So that's kind of very handy. Uh, Sweet, I made uh, this one very recently. This is to schedule things with dependencies and parallelism. Uh, I did a kind of a big thing for a big client we have in Google Cloud. Uh, they were using a tool from Apache named Airflow to schedule something uh, with tons, hundreds of dependencies and parallelism, and it was not working. And uh, I did that, and after that, I remember I saw lots of people in um, in the forum saying, "Well, I would like to schedule something with dependencies. Like, I want to run my backup of my production, and then I don't know, send an email, and then run in parallel lots of SQLs, and then after that, backup my archive log, for example. But we need dependencies, meaning if the first one fails, you don't want to." Um, uh, run the the next one. So um, I did it. So let's say that you have a first step, which is a start step. It can be well, a full backup, uh, sending an email, whatever. After that, let's say like you want to do st some stuff. So this we want to run this do stuff one two three four in parallel. And when it's done, I want to do something else. But the do stuff number five has to wait for the four others previous do stuff to be done successfully. And after that, you can have, for example, an end. This is a very simple dependency thing. For the example, you can do crazy things with hundreds of dependencies and parallelism. But this is something you may want to do. So Suite works with the configuration files, which has three simple sections. The first one is config, it starts with that, minus space config. And you can specify on success, so when it's going to be successful, what you want to do. So here I just put echo all good, and on failure, something went wrong, oh no, it failed. I put echo, you can put a script, you can send an email, you, whatever. Another um, section in names. Names, you define some alias, for example, I'm going to define uh, my alias start uh, in, in, um, uh, is just gonna. For example, I made a simple script which is I sleep. It's just to sleep one second. It is provided with, a, but it is well tested with Herman backups and whatever scripts. And then I'm gonna de define an alias to do my stuff one, which is I'm gonna sleep two seconds. Do stuff two. I'm gonna sleep six seconds, and you can with. Uh, Hashtag specific, um, put some comments on it. And same for three, four, five, and this is a, this is a command. Uh, do stuff six gonna be ignored. And what to do as an end thing. So this is just to define some um, aliases. And after that, you got some dependencies. You define your own dependencies. So this is gonna define the dependencies that I shown uh, previously on the, my first schema. For example, your first step is to start. You have no dependency because it depends on nothing. And after that, your do stuff one depends on start, do stuff two on start, three and four on start. Everything's going to be started in parallel. And do stuff one, five, depend on one, two, three, four. So it has to wait. 
and the end depends on do stuff five. So this simple configuration file, you execute it, and it's going to execute everything, uh, executing my script I sleep. Everything is, um, this example is available from my Git repository, and you can do it very easily. Um, again, there is menus H for help. Uh, you can stop the parallelism, make more parallelism, choose your parallelism. And uh, believe me, this is very uh, robust thing because it is used by now a big client doing that for million dollars every day. It's not the exact one. I redeveloped this one as a simple one because we are DBAs, we want a simpler branching dependencies. But um, it is based out of make files uh, and it's very, very robust and powerful. Uh, log rotate. Uh, sometimes it's very good to script, but sometimes it's good to not script. Um, for example, the Oracle logs management, it has always been like that, you know, for me at least. The, sys the sysadmin were saying, your database has to manage its logs, its log files, which kind of makes sense. Honestly, uh, I think Oracle should manage his log be better than that. And as a dead as a the DBA say, oh, your operating system should manage all the logs we put in there. So it has always been a fight. And hopefully, uh, and then, yeah, this leads to this kind of um, situation. You know, you can see lots of things like that in the cron tab, uh, purge or addresses. This is a real example. It's almost 700 lines to purge trust files. So obviously, uh, when I found that, uh, well, it was bugged, you know, it's hard coded everywhere. Where when you need 700 lines uh, to purge some trust files, something is wrong. You know? So it's difficult to maintain, difficult to debug, I won't say impossible. And usually hard coded everywhere, because if you need 700 lines, well, something has been badly designed. So hopefully, uh, Oracle from 11G uh, released ADR, it's Automatic Di Diagnostic Repository. And honestly, this was my favorite 11G feature on paper. Because it has been uh, released in 11G and now from now on, everything is in XML. In XML. Uh, so ADR purge the XML files it's introduced, but it doesn't purge the audit files, and nor, nor the text version of the XML log files, meaning all the log files, alert log, listener log, that were there before. So basically, ADR come with a new feature, XML log files, takes care of it, but not of the rest. So you still find this, because you still have to purge, rotate, delete, whatever you want, your trust files. So log rotate is meant to rotate log files and purge files, uh, does the name. The name has been very well chosen. It is a tool used by any Unix, uh, by Linux, by Apache, by your phone, by uh, everything to purge their, log, their own logs. And uh, I've, I have a phone for, I don't know, for a while, and I've never had a file system full due to my logs. So we can say that log rotate works very, very well. Uh, it rotates a lot yeah, of your phone and you never get a file system full. Any Linux Linux system and comes with log rotate by default and it works very well. It's available on any Unix platform. Oh, there is a typo there. Uh, there is just a single configuration file in etc log rotate.d. Uh, this is for example, this is an example with an Oracle one. I named it. This is one I made. Uh, you can see one which is for HTTP, um, syslog, whatever. This is HTTP, this is Apache. And um, this is to complete, this is what I use to complete ADR. <coughs> As you know, in Oracle, diagnostic DEX parameter points to the logs directory. For example, here, a U01 APP Oracle. And uh, the text files, can, which are not maintained by ADR, can be found like that. So you got diagnostic DEX, diag, this is hard-coded. So you got a component, RDMS, listener, whatever, DB unique name, instance name, traces, and star.log. And uh, for the listeners, uh, you got this kind of path. This is standardized, so it is very easy with a simple LS like this one to find every log you need to rotate. 
So if you go with log rotate, here is how it works. We specify uh, log rotate uses find, uh, the find command behind that. So you just specify a path. You can specify two paths, let's say that one is uh, app grid and uh, the other app oracle, because you have two different uh, diagnostic decks for grid and for oracle. Okay? Everything goes between curly brackets. So here you say specify daily. I want to rotate my uh, logs daily, for example. You can put weekly, monthly, yearly. Rotate seven, meaning I want to keep seven versions before purging it definitely, or you want to back up it every week and then you lose nothing. Compress, yes, I want to compress my, uh, my rotated logs. Copy truncate, uh, meaning that um, uh, log rotate with copy the files and then empty the source file, then you still have the same inode. And missing OK, meaning OK, if you don't find anything in these logs, well, I don't mind, you know, don't, don't warn me, I don't want to care. Uh, no data extension is by default log rotate put a date extension to the rotated file. If you put no date extension, you're going to have a version like dot one, dot two, dot six, seven. I personally prefer that. It is more readable to my eyes. And size, for example, you can specify a size because if you rotate every day, for example, and you have a very non-busy database, you're going to rotate and have super tiny Oracle log, uh, Oracle log, alert log. So if you say put something like size 20 meg, it's going to rotate, for example, your alert log or listener log only if they are bigger than 20 meg which is still decent. I mean, if you want to investigate 20 megabytes of an alert log or listener log, well, that's okay. And you have, in my example, Rotate 7, you got seven uh, versions. So you have 20 meg times seven history of it. It's, it's good enough, but feel free to put anything you want. That is nine lines compared to my almost 700 lines uh, example. The thing is that you can also add the audit files. Um, so to add the audit file, for example, here you can see that I put a star, then this covers my app oracle and app grid path. Okay, so in one single uh, line I can have everything. And you have in log rotate a last action or first action, whatever, when you can add some find to delete some actions to delete some files, sorry. So here I'm going to delete all my audit files with a star here, so with for every database, uh, older than seven days. So this is 12 lines. Uh, this is what I do on all my clients, and uh, we are never cold, because as you got some stars here, everything is very well standardized, and then if someone had a data file, a listener, or whatever, is going to be taken into account. Uh, with using log rotate, you spend an hour just figuring out everything, and you will never have any any more page for that. How to test a log rotate file? You have a command minus d. Oracle is not a user; it's the name of the file I created, and you need to specify that if you are non-root, which is uh, often is the case. And then you're gonna see everything that can be, that our log rotate will do, but it won't do it. It should, it's a dry run thing. How to find the scripts? There was a question about that. Uh, you got to, you go to my blog, unknowndbiblogspot.com. You click on the scripting and you, oh, sorry. And you got a link to, um, on the left, if you click on the name, uh, you got a link to the blog post expli explaining everything. You got the code itself and the Git repository. You can clone it. Feel free. Uh, Rakesh, I I hope you will have this PPT shared to us. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Dili, just let me know how I can share that or I can put it public uh, and share it on LinkedIn or with SlideShare or something. Yes, I'll do that. Sure. Uh Fred just uh, shared the PPT to us and we will share it in the community. Okay, so I will share to Dili and Dili will take care of it. Yes, sure. Um, um, yeah, please. Yes. Go. 
I just say if you got any questions and thank you all for attending. Um, if some are interested, I have others extra which has are only Exadata specific. So I put it on top of that because you may not all have uh, Exadata specific. So maybe if you got questions and after that, if there is maybe 10 more minutes for those interested only in Exadata stuff, I can present them as well. No question? Okay, uh, so Rakesh, uh, for your question of all your technical thing in Rack status, just let me know what you expect in LinkedIn and I, I will check how to make sure. it. Sure, I will, I, will, I will give you a DM on LinkedIn. Yeah, sure. And I didn't see that. So if there's no question, I can go, or should I stop now, Dili, or can I go with a couple of Exerata stuff? Mm. I think we do not have any problem with going through the exact data stuff. Though okay. everyone is not comfortable on the exact data, but it's good to know about the exact data stuff, right? So let's yeah, go. Yeah, this is why I put it after that. So anyone who is no exact data or not interested or I don't know, feel free to to leave. Uh, what comes next is on the exact data stuff. Let's start with that. Um, exa rack layout. Um, in Exadata, you know, you have lots of nodes, um, lots of disks, lots of IPs, lots of everything. So, uh, I w uh, very often when you change your client, you want to connect, for example, to your ILOM, which is a kind of console of a database server. And, you know, what is the IP of that? What is a Cisco switch IP? How many switches do I have in my rack? What are the IP of these, of that? <coughs> so you end up, oh, sorry. You know, you end up in ETC host uh, or this kind of um, Exadata file. And I was very bored of, of doing that. So I made a script that shows that nicely. And actually, OEM has a plugin for Exadata. And it shows this kind of thing. But the same, you know, I no big fan of OEM because I need to connect there to click everywhere and I just want to have a very quick information. So here you got, um, this is a rack, so it shows like uh, the box of the Exadata and you got the U which is the location. So technically you got the PDU which is the alimentation, the power, and you got the cells and you got the um, host IP and everything. So just in a glimpse, it takes less than a second to generate that. You can see everything. Uh, this is, for example, this is a full rack and this is, um, uh, there is two nodes. So this is a quarter rack and you can see where it is, the IP. Uh, I use it, it's very handy. And uh, as you, when you have a small uh, quarter rack, your box is basically empty. So I just make, um, uh, S, uh, S option just to not show the empty thing. So, well, this one is nice. I like it. It's full of colors. Uh, cell status. Um, well, that's a good presentation for those who don't know Exalata. Exalata cell storage. So this is a storage the disk. Uh, every cell storage has 12 hard disk or you can have eight flash disk if you, it is only flash disk. And in your Exadata, you can have between three and 14 cells. And each cell has eight flash disks, except flash disk on top of the hard drive. So blah, 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 you can have really, I made the math, uh, tons of disks everywhere. And each cell disk is divided on grid disk for ASM. Well, and usually you have three ASM disk group, but you can have more. So, and you can have more. So basically to monitor and have a quick and easy uh, vision of your disks, uh, it's not easy. So I made that uh, cell status scripts, which shows everything. So uh, on the left column, you got the cell disks. So here I got seven, seven cells. So seven different storage units. And I got the status of all my hard disk so you got 12 hard disk 12 with status normal and you got the errors 
and on the left you got the flash disk here it is 16 flash disk and you can quickly see that if something is missing um, or if uh, the errors number of errors are too much and maybe it needs to be um, uh, investigated because maybe the disk is starting to fail or something uh, yes, here you, you got 12 disks, you got how many disks are in status normal, so if there is only 11, you got a problem with one disk, and the number of errors. And you got the same with the grid disk, so uh, you got your cell, cell storages, and you got one column per disk group. So here you got data disk group, DBFS, and RICO. And inside that, you got all the status. So you very quickly see uh, the status of all your this this group and everything. <coughs> um, if you are, as you have errors, sometimes you are you always have some errors, and the, with minus v like verbose, uh, you can have um, a look at the errors and see the exact disk which has, for example, this one has 222 errors. Maybe you need to investigate that more. It may not be normal. In an extreme flash configuration, you have no hard disks, so it's only flash disk. Makes sense. If you have a unused disk, when you add some storage extension, for example, in Exadata, you may have some disk unused, and it they appear like that. Uh, if it's normal or not, at least you will see it very quickly. Uh, for those working with ASM, um, ASM deactivation outcome on Exalata means that uh, the redundancy is no more ensured by ASM. So if you got a disk failure, you're going to be in trouble. So this is something you don't want to do to have, never. You have that when you are patching because you are rebooting some cell storage, but you don't want to have that in a normal thing. So it appears, oh, sorry, in a red, um, with a red background. So you won't missing with um, a comment, ASM activation outcome is not yes. So you should be very, very careful with that. So we sell status, you just run that, it takes a second, you have a nice table, you know where is green is okay and red is not okay. Uh, exa version uh, in my team, and I, uh, I did many presentation about that, uh, different conferences and in my team, we patch Exalata a lot, and uh, as uh, I said earlier, I like to have everything, you know, known and idempotent. So um, my goal, we, you, so when you patch something, you are always wondering what is my version before patching and what is my version, my um, version after patching. And uh, you can do that with decline. Decline is um, default on Exadata, you can like YAL, the, another launcher I presented before. You can launch many commands in parallel across another cluster. So this is how it looks to get um, the version of, uh, of your database cluster, database nodes. The thing is that uh, you have eight DB nodes, 14 cells, two Anfiliban switches. Your syntax is different. And maybe the configuration file you use for decline, maybe it's not updated, you don't know what has been done before you. So it's not that easy to show to the client and to you, have a, a clear vision of just the version. So I made that and uh, exa version, just to check the version. So you got the name of the cluster and you got one section, for, one for the database nodes, one for the storage server, one for the EB and Filibon switches. And if one has a different version as the other, it appears in teal. So um, you can very quickly see if, well, for any reason, uh, this Infiniban switch has a wrong version. So uh, definitely you want to investigate it very quickly. Uh, also, it happened to us that uh, this is a command to check image info uh, on a database node. You can have uh, the image version, which is the good one, the one you want to you, you go, but you got an image status failure. Uh, it is not easy to detect that, and your patching tool patch manager won't tell you that. So you have to figure that out. And uh, we found that after that afterwards, and you know, it's always delicate that to say to the client, oh my God, sorry, we missed that, you know. So I changed uh, exa version and now 
it appears in red with a note. So you know that something is wrong. You need a reboot, you need, you need to do something. You don't want that. You got the good version, but image is failure. So with the exact version, you know it in Eclipse. You got options to show minus I only the, your infinite switches, minus D your database servers, minus C your cells. And the syntax. As usual, yeah, I show everything. Uh, Exa, how smart? Yeah, recently, well, I don't know, months ago, I've been asked to do uh, an audit of a, a big client of my company. They have a big Exadata, something super big. And I was checking all that, and you know what? Everything was good. I mean, it was working well, and you know, uh, I was asking to provide an audit, and what do you want to say? You know, you cannot uh, reply, well, all good. You know, you cannot say that. So I was wondering what can I found? And actually I was one, this came to my mind that everyone in Exadata say, well, Exadata is awesome. Oh, Exadata has a smart scan. Exadata have this feature and this feature. Yeah, great, cool. But the question is that <coughs> how much smartness of the Exadata smart feature do, do your database use? Because maybe they don't use it at all, you know, and we don't have this information. So I made that. How much your database use the Exadata feature? So actually, it just shows um, a table where, for example, I took the logical read from cache, and you have the overall and instance one and instance two. So you got a big number. The physical read, so you can quickly see, it just gives you uh, an information of how much read uh, compared to the how much write compared, no, physical read to logical read, so you got an information. Doesn't mean it's good or bad, but it's an information. And you have this interesting eligible for smart scan. So for example, here 81% of my instance one reads are eligible for smart scan. Smart scan as a super smart way of uh, spinning up any query by the storage server of Exalata. And among that, you can know that 26% uh, of the whole I.O. have been saved by storage index. That's great, right? And uh, you got all the parameters saved during file creation. This is often very, very slow. Coronar cache, there is none here. And when cells are overloaded, uh, people don't really know, but when your cell storage are overloaded, 100% CPU, they refuse to do the smart scan. And then this will increase this percentage. So you can know that if you got non-zero here, that your cell storage are too heavily used and they refuse to do smart scan. And the most important thing is that return by smart scan, 3%, meaning that your cell storage of Exalata, I've saved 97%, where the overall is 96%, of the whole IO just by being smart. That's cool, right? And this is, sorry, the screenshot is not very cool here. This is the system, this is a six node I was investigating when I did that. And uh, here, uh, this one uses HCC, so hybrid coronar compression. And by doing that, I found that node uh, one, two, three, four, and six were doing 1,000% decompression on the DB server. Then I could point out that they don't use a smart scan uh, for HCC on these nodes because a specific service or not. And well, that's an interesting one to show to the client saying, well, look, this everything looks good, but for this one, you know, you don't have any, you don't have a smart scan for HCC on node four and six. And this is the end. <laughs> I'm done for, for with this one. So it's also a thing if you work with Exadata. Uh, I use it uh, um, a lot if you patch or whatever. So if you got any question, feel free to ask them, or um, if you wish, you can contact me 
every script has my name, my email on it. So you can shoot me an email or or uh, contact me through the LinkedIn team or ask Didi or whatever. Thanks for attending and hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much for uh, presenting in this session, being not so much healthy. You managed to present it. So thank you very much, and my pleasure. Okay, guys, good any question? Yes, any question for me? And uh, one of the attendees, Prabhas, is asking that: Do we have any script that checks all standby status and syncing status on any? Oh. No. So no, because uh, and this is something I asked to the um, data guard project, um, uh, mm -hmm. data guard. Uh, how to say that? Data guard boss at Oracle recently. Um, the thing is that this information uh, are not known by CRS, so they are just you. Just you have to connect to the uh, to DG the data guard broker to know mm -hmm. that. So the thing is that clients. Can have uh, lots of different configuration, so I would need to connect to any DG to do show configuration, show lag, and it, it, it's just a mess. So uh, when I was speaking at uh, in Bulgaria uh, in November, I asked him to implement that feature mm -hmm. to have this information in CRS. It is the same as uh, I got many questions with rack status. Is that does rack status can show the PDB status? And the answer is no. And the answer is no, not yet. The thing is that uh, grid infrastructure doesn't know about the PDB. He know he doesn't even know about the version of your database. So there is the only way to know the status of a PDB is to connect to the CDB and do a select from Vidura PDB. For the same reason that these, uh, as for the um, uh, standby slides, I cannot easily get connected to every single instance because people have so many different configuration it's going to be a mess and i don't want to go in that super complicated thing but there is a very good news is that in gi 20c which is not released yet but i guess it's going to be very soon uh, i saw an announcement is a new feature that you could be you would be able to manage your pdbs from gi the meaning a service CTL start PDB, uh, whatever. Okay. I, we don't know the syntax yet. Mm -hmm. It means that this information will be in the grid infrastructure. So then I could add it in rack status from 20C onwards. So that's a very okay. cool. Uh, that's mm -hmm. a very cool feature. But uh, so as soon as it is uh, available, I'm gonna check how how they made it and add it in rack status from 20c before that it's just um it's just nothing your grid doesn't know about your pdb it doesn't even know about your version by the way you can i've tested that you can run a database with a, a newer patch set that's the grid infrastructure grid doesn't know about that so it is officially not supported but it works because mm -hmm. grid doesn't know so for the lags, maybe I'm going to check in CRS 20C if they put that in it. The data guard product manager told me they are thinking about something about that because, mm -hmm. but I don't know what. So something may come. It doesn't mean that uh, it's going to be in CRS, but I asked him. So, but I don't know how my uh, word will be heard, but. Uh, Oracle is aware about that. Maybe he's not going to do it in CRS. I, I don't think it's going to be in CRS as per he, what he answered, but uh, mm -hmm. well, we'll see. So, so no, accurately, it's not easy to do that. <coughs> Thank you, Fred. So, my pleasure, guys. My pleasure. Uh, okay, Fred. See you later, Dili. See you Monday at work. Yes, yeah. Sure. Okay, Fred. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for attending this awesome session. And thank you so much, Fred, for this all detailed 
uh, scripts and all this for info. My pleasure. And, Many uh, people use them. It's a, it's mm -hmm. a pleasure to help everyone. We are all on the same boat and we just want to have something easy, you know, for our yeah, everyday. This is why I made it. So happy that everyone likes it and uses it. Keep it simple. Everything should be simple. Yep. Everything should be managed, everything should be organized, and everything should be seen. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, Fred. Have a great weekend. See you Bye. later, guys. Bye. Bye.